Hello and welcome. Today, let's examine what Ignatius taught at the beginning of his spiritual exercises, in what is called, the first principle, and foundation. The launching point of Ignatian spirituality, is that God loves us fiercely, passionately, and unconditionally. Because of this love, God's desires and hopes for us, are based on who we are, our gifts, talents, preferences, and joys. What then, should our response to God be? In Ignatian spirituality, this response is known as the first principle and foundation. Let's unpack this, using a contemporary interpretation, by David Fleming, S.J. The first thing is that, the goal of our life is to live with God forever. God, who loves us, gave us life. Our own response of love, allows God's life to flow into us, without limit. Now, if God is love, then the goal of our life is to love and be in love. A line from the closing song of the musical, Le Miserable, says it best, to love another person, is to see the face of God. Second, all the things in this world are gifts of God, presented to us so that we can know God more easily, and make a return of love, more readily. Here's the thing. Everything that I have, my laptop, my job, my bank account, my friends and family, and even the roti prata that I am about to have for breakfast, is a gift from God, a manifestation of how much God loves me. As a result we appreciate and use all these gifts from God, to help us develop as loving persons. But, if any of these gifts should become the center of our lives, they displace God, and so hinder our growth toward our goal. Remember the rich young ruler in the Gospel of Matthew who asked Jesus, how he could possess eternal life, and Jesus' reply, Go and sell your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. In everyday life then, we must hold ourselves in balance before all these gifts. By this Ignatius didn't mean just material possessions, but the intangible too. He says, we should not fix our desires on health or sickness, wealth or poverty, success or failure, a long life or a short one. For everything has the potential of calling forth in us, a deeper response to our life in God. Some of us may find ourselves asking, is it wrong to desire to be healthy, or successful? Well Ignatius didn't mean that. What he was trying to get across was that we should hold ourselves in balance at all times, be indifferent, and not fixated with the things that we have, or don't have, to the point that God comes lower in priority. When Jesus said, go sell your possessions then come follow me, he is inviting us into a relationship with him. That's what he wants. The question is, do we want that too? The final line of the principle and foundation holds the key. Our only desire and one choice, should be to want and to choose what better leads to God's deepening his life in us. Ignatius exhorts us to focus on how we're called to love by God, and allow ourselves to be open to whatever comes, in order to attain that love, whether it be health or sickness, poverty or riches, success or failure. Like the vow we make in the sacrament of matrimony, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, this is what the principle and foundation calls us to. Because if we have found true love, then we love, no matter what happens, and always choose the better option, for that love to thrive. So, Ignatius's first principle and foundation, provides us with fresh lenses, through which to see God, His love for us, and how to best use His gifts to us. And meditating on it, helps us renew our entire attitude, as to how we could better relate and respond to God in our everyday life.
Let's pray the examine together now. I thank God for the day, for my gifts and blessings, for my life, for all that I am and have. I pray for light. I ask Jesus to let me see my day, as the Holy Spirit sees it. I ask the Holy Spirit to show me where He has been present at work, in me, and around me. I review my day carefully. I recall the day's events, people, places, and my reactions. I note when I felt peace, hope, love. I also note when I felt darkness, disturbed, disconnected. Then, I pick one particular exchange. One exchange that made the deepest impression on me. And I speak to the Lord about it. I ask Jesus for forgiveness. For the times when I acted, spoke, and thought contrary to His grace and calling for me. For the things I did, and failed to do, that distanced me from Him. I look forward in hope, to how I can do better with God's grace. I ask Jesus to bless me, with the graces I need, to live more in His image. We conclude by praying, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This has been Take 5 with Iggy. See you again next week.